This is supposed to be an in-vehicle ozone generator. Now, this was on eBay and it was suspiciously cheap and I wondered is that one of the fakes or is it a real one? But it turns out the reason they're selling it cheaply is because there's a huge design flaw in this. It's a real one, but it doesn't work because the person that has designed this has mushed two bits of circuitry together, expect it to work, and it hasn't. I would show you it working, but it doesn't work. It powers up at 12 volts and it draws uh, about 100 milliamps, but it just doesn't do anything. Although the circuitry is here and the emitter is here. Now, what these are supposed to do is that when you plug it into your car's cigarette lighter socket, it is supposed to make this bulb at the end glow a dull blue and it's supposed to create fairly high levels of ozone far too high for being in the vehicle while it's running but okay for deodorizing vehicles um, while you're not in them now let's see if we can get this out there is a little spring that goes up as with many of these circuits i may have to uh, get a screwdriver and push this down just to get this out this is always the hard bit to get back in again So let's get down close to this and I'll show you where they've screwed up. So here we have what looks like a Royer type oscillator. And it looks as though they've been trying to make it work with a link across. There is the high voltage transformer and normally the high voltage transformer would be coupled directly to this. Now let me show you this. Now the things worth noting here, see this diode in the capacitor? They are not. There's what they're actually what's stopping it working. Let me zoom back out, bring in the notepad, focus down onto the notepad, grab the pen and do you a little doodle. So this is a device that normally has a neon lamp. Now the neon lamp, which I've drawn a wee bit wobbly there, not to worry, has two electrodes inside it and a pinch here, and the two wires coming out, and in the normal operation, it's a blue neon lamp, it's got phosphor on the out, outside. In normal operation, you'd pass current limited supply, and a discharge would occur between these electrodes, and it would make the phosphor glow. What they do to make an ozone generator is they get rid of one of those wires, they only use one of them, and around the outside, they put a mesh. And that mesh is effectively connected one connection to a high voltage transformer and the other connection goes to the electrode going into the neon lamp. The one that's going into the neon lamp couples through the gas, making it glow, but also that couples it evenly to the inside of that wall of glass and then it couples capacitively to the outside mesh and where the current flows, because there's a barrier, a, a dielectric barrier, you get a corona discharge occurs on the mesh on the outside surface and that's what creates the ozone. What they've done is they've put a diode in the look of it, and we'll reverse engineer this, and they've put a capacitor, and this would be the normal circuit for an, an ionizer. And in an ionizer, they would actually ground one end to the uh, general chassis of the vehicle, and the other end would be connected usually via resistor for uh, safety to a sharp point, and it would create load, a high voltage, and that would create lots of ions at the tip. But because they're applying DC to this, it relies on the capacitive coupling and the current flowing backwards and forwards to actually create that corona discharge, and that's not happening because the DC can't do that, so it just doesn't work. So I'm going to reverse engineer this, and we can take a look at the circuitry. One moment, please. And resume. But first I have to eat humble pie before we look at this because I was wrong about the reason it wasn't working and uh, I also the schematic I drew the little doodle wasn't quite right and also I had the diode point the wrong way I showed a positive ion generator which literally strips electrons out the air and isn't really what you want to do but it got the message across let's zoom down this now I have I have made amends by confessing to my error so this is based on a Royer oscillator. It's a two-transistor oscillator. I'll show you the schematic. It's got an inductor in the input. That's a crucial part. A little capacitor across the outside of the uh, windings that helps with the switching of the transistors on and off quite quickly. It's got a bias resistor to start it up. 
it's got the high voltage transformer and then it's got the output circuitry, which sometimes has a capacitor, sometimes doesn't have the capacitor, and never usually has the diode for this application. This is very strange. It is, in fact, a half-wave voltage multiplier like you'd find in microwave ovens, and it puts out a very choppy uh, increased voltage, but that works for the ionisation, which is what that's intended for. Uh, so the circuitry, I, I'll just take my hands out the way you can marvel at that. It's all fairly visible. It's a very simple design. The fault was that I did major components, small page. I ended up getting another module because I couldn't work out. One of the transistors was getting hot. It was drawing 100 milliamps. I tried changing the bias resistor. It didn't work. Tested the transistors, took them out, put them in a tester. They showed as being OK, but it turns out they weren't OK. They were kind of either bad or off tolerance um, and that meant the circuit was not going into oscillation it was just basically sitting in a sort of biased state with one transistor on um, right okay let's go to the schematic here is the schematic I shall zoom down a little bit so this is a classic Royer oscillator. Now, this bit of the circuitry here, the high voltage, in hindsight, I could have turned this upside down. I had to, like, change that because I thought it was working a different way, but that's okay. This is how it is. That's the half-wave uh, output uh, voltage multiplier. So the incoming supply has a smoothing capacitor for stability, but uh, the other module doesn't have that. I swapped every component in this. I even tried tried changing the bias resistor to a different value, and uh, I just swapped just about everything, including the transformers. It was ridiculous. The inductor feeds down to the centre tap of the two uh, sections of primary. Effectively, it's just a centre tapped coil. Each end of that primary is pulled alternately to the negative rail, and the reason for this is that the Royer oscillator is designed to put out symmetrical AC on the output. It's useful for things like voltage multipliers or, as is often the case of this circuit, driving cold cathode tubes. And that's again where this capacitor comes in. There is the capacitor, 68 nanofarad in this case. The other unit had 100 nanofarad. This unit also had a 68 microhenry uh, inductor and the other one had a 100 microhenry. So they correlate 68 and 68 and 100 and 100 to the two different designs. Very strange. There's a feedback winding that is used to alternately drive the transistors. And uh, it's it's quite an unusual arrangement just to have the winding that way. There's one bias resistor, there's quite often two, but just one in this instance, just to basically just trickle current to this transistor and just provide some bias to turn on. It's whichever transistor wins that initial struggle to turn on uh, is the one that uh, gets advantage because as soon as it does start turning on, it induces current in the primary and that induces the correct uh, polarity. Uh, in the feedback wind to keep that transistor turned on. It will basically, it will put a magnetic field into the uh, inductor, the transformer, and then once uh, current stops coupling across, that it will then start collapsing. This transistor will turn on and this one will turn off. I think it's also part of the reason for this capacitor is to make sure that transistor turns off decisively. It's one of those weird analogy things. There's lots of analogy voltages all shooting up and down at the same time. That was that technical. It's one for the analog electronics guys, the linear stuff. I should put a wee dot there. I think a wee dot there would be quite good. Here is the secondary winding, and here is the configuration they've actually got it. They've got a diode across the ozone generator bit. And this would normally, you'd have the, uh, this side would be connected by that link, which the other one had a sneaky little link going across, very close to the high voltage connections. I think the reason they put the wire link across was to avoid that, uh, uh, the risk of tracking and arcing on the circuit board. But um, normally the ionizer needle would be connected here and it would benefit from not just the voltage of the transformer, but be charging up that capacitor and then the transformer would be boosting the voltage up on that capacitor just to create a higher ionization voltage. That keeps the voltage on the transformer down, which makes it more reliable. It is a multi-section uh, bobbin it's got in this. It's got the coarse primary section, which had very low resistance, and then it's got the uh, multiple, turn, multiple sections of the secretary to try and keep the voltage across them low. It's worth mentioning that... Uh, this one was 330 ohm on the secondary, and the other one was 210 ohm on the secondary winding. Um, I didn't put 
values for the primary and the feedback because they were just too low to measure without specialist low resistance measuring equipment. But what they've done here, the ozone generator, the little neon thing, this neon with the mesh around it, and I'll show you a picture of that. I'll show you a picture of that right now. Let me just zoom out a bit for this because it's bigger. Here's what it looks like. Oh, I didn't really need to zoom out that much. I'll zoom right back in again then. Now, I also mentioned that sometimes they have, they use, just use one of the internal electrodes, as is done in this case, but this other one uses both uh, wires. They just tuck them into the one solder connection, which makes sense. It's a good way to do it. I've maybe just twist them together. But there is the mesh on the outside of that bulb, and the gas discharge inside couples the current to the inside of the glass. The glass is the electrical separator, the dielectric separator. And then this is the stainless steel mesh, which is kind of like they blob solder through it. So it basically just grips it on both sides. I don't think the solder would actually take onto this too well, unless it was specifically aimed at uh, stainless steel. But the idea is that when the, with the alternating current and capacitance effect, you get a uh, uh, coupling onto the mesh but it's not a very good coupling, and uh, it means you get a corona discharge occurs on the side that's facing the glass. And because it's a mesh, the air can flow through it and get exposed to the corona discharge, which creates the ozone by stripping atoms apart, molecules apart, into separate atoms, should I say. Getting back to this, the diode across this is not really helping much, and certainly you couldn't put it across a capacitor because then you'd have smooth DC across that, and the capacitive coupling corona discharge effect simply wouldn't work. But they have got this diode across, and just out of interest, I cut the lead. I put everything back as it was before. I cut the leads uh, on the diode and then bridged it with a insulated handle tool. And uh, when you bridge it, there is a slight increase in intensity, but it does work bizarrely with that diode in place, but it's just not an ideal way to drive it. It's worth mentioning that the reason for this capacitor in series then, if we get rid of this diode, that could just go across directly because it is just a very low value of capacitance in the sort of neon indicator with the mesh wrap around it. But by putting this capacitor in series, they often do this with cold cathode tubes uh, because it limits, it's like a capacitive dropper. It limits the current that can flow on each half of the waveform and uh, lets you regulate the output. If you put a cold cathode tube across one of these little Royer oscillators without that capacitor, the tube will sink as much current as possible and it causes the current to shoot up and the transistors to get very hot. And also, if you, if you remember the old PC case, cold cathode tubes, you get short ones and you get long ones. The shorter ones had a uh, lower value capacitor just to ration more current through. Also, the other thing they can do with that, you can have multiple capacitors from this point, and it means you can run several tubes in series, uh, should I say in parallel effectively, from the output of one transformer. But getting rid of this, rid of this diode, what happens now is uh, that could have been coupled directly across. It doesn't matter. They've put it in, in line with that uh, capacitor. And uh, all that's happening is the AC from the output of that is just jiggling backwards and forwards and causing that corona discharge. I could, I should show you this. Let me just turn the power supply on. What's it set to? It's set to a lower voltage. But it's interesting to note that uh, even though, even at a lower voltage, like say, for instance, 5 volts, these circuits work quite well. So this is the one that I have butchered. Let's get the connections around the right way to avoid any more awkwardness. And we'll put that on there. And, well, you can already see it glowing. See the blue glow? I don't know if you'll hear this. I'll hold it up to the microphone. I don't know if you heard anything there. I can't hear anything. Hold on, I'm going to sniff it. Trace levels of ozone, indeed. Um... But that is it. Uh, the other one, since I've taken the transistors out of it to fix the original, really it's like, this is lit literally triggers broom now on a circuit board. It's had so much change. I put in ZTX 450s on uh, this one, but to be honest, I don't think they're optimal, but it does work. Uh, the ones that are in use, C945, are a specific transistor that is designed for high frequency oscillators and uh, amplifier circuits like this. But uh, very simple, very neat, didn't work out the packet, but that's all right. And also the thing I said about the, uh, about using this uh, when you're not in the car, in the instructions it says, 
Uh, on the Furious 12 volt DC24, please make sure the light at the end of this unit is turned off or pull it out by leaving your car. Very strange. It's also in German and uh, and um, English. Lots of uh, strange Chinglish on it and specifications talk about negative ions when it's really not a negative ion generator. I suppose really though. In a way, it would generate negative ions from the mesh because it's got sharp points. But having said that, it's not an ideal situation to actually do it, particularly when you've got a metal housing end. And it is worth mentioning that the other version has a chromed, a completely chromed end, which is conductive. Uh, this end at least has a plastic insert going into it to actually provide separation because that would also defeat things from working. But um, it works. It's interesting. I don't necessarily recommend this type for your vehicle. But it was well worth exploring, and it is fixed, and it was a bit of a an educational experience in the process, and very odd to see their perspective of how this circuitry is used. It's very clear that these components are copied component value for component value in most instances, and maybe just tweaked to try and get it to operate. But it's just clone, clone, clone. Lots of people copying other people's circuitry, which is itself quite interesting.